Why, hello there, friends. My name is Jerry Hagee. I live on the prairies of southern Alberta with my husband, DJ, and our four children who are between the ages of 20 all the way down to this little lady who is almost four. My youngest daughter is here helping me put the dishes away. And one of my priorities as a parent is to teach my children how to clean. I just started inviting my kids to help me clean while they were still very young, like two or three. I use encouragement. I try to make it kind of fun for them. Um, I let them make a mess, you know. I ask them to join me. And usually, like, they're very willing. Um, They might not have been very helpful, especially for the first year or two while they're three or four. But it keeps them busy, and it taught them that we work together. So now my older kids, who are have been around for a while (laughs) they know basically how to clean um they're not like super super great at it or detailed but they at least have the general grasp of how to do things so in the year 2020 everything was feeling a little frazzled i was pregnant with this little lady and i was tired and i was feeling like i could not keep up with things and i just i did not have time to do like the deep cleaning beyond like regular day-to-day chores and so I came up with a cleaning system that has been working for us. It is like not perfect by any means but it is the most valuable advice I can give you and so I'm putting it here at the very beginning of this video. What I did was I mapped out what our regular chores were that we needed to do on a daily basis and that came down to four things usually dishes for sure uh the table and the island because those are big flat surfaces in my kitchen that just gather clutter also our laundry because we're a family of six it is a never-ending chore and doing a little bit every day just helps to keep the laundry monster away right and then the fourth thing was floors Um, picking up floors, sweeping, and then eventually getting around to mopping. (laughs) But really, it was more just the daily pickup that I wanted help with. Then we had a little family meeting, and I talked about this with my family. I said that I needed help, and I asked them each to take one of these chores. So my two older children, my husband, and then my youngest son, who's nine, he helps me with my chore. And this little lady, she just helps in whenever she can and whenever she wants to. This way, I only have one daily chore to worry about each day. And it just gave me more freedom, more time, and more energy so that I could get to deep cleaning or just so that I could keep up. And then I help out with the other chores as often as I can besides my like one daily chore. Sometimes I'll do the dishes for the person. But at least now the rest of the family can help me and I don't feel like I have to nag at them, um, you know, or just be resentful that I have to do everything. They know what they need to do and they get it done. Well, for the most part. I mean, they get it done to their ability, right? And each one is different. So I have my daughter who's turning four here in the next month or two. I have my younger son who is nine. My teenage daughter is turning 15 soon. And then my oldest son is 20. So they have a nice big age gap. They help take care of each other and they really help around the house. I grew up having to do chores. Um, Saturday mornings, that was our chore day. You know, our mom wrote out a list of things that she wanted us to work on that day. And they included, like, mostly indoor chores and sometimes, like, the garden or lawn work that needed to be done. And I just learned how to work at a young age. Again, my parents didn't expect us to be perfect, but they did expect us to give it, like, our best effort. Um, they were patient with us and I remember as a kid having chore charts we made like little chore charts with um, some little like dollar amounts there wasn't even dollars I think they were like a quarter for finishing a job and um, it was just like a way to motivate us and to get some of those chores done 
um, actually, I think when I got a little older in my teens, I think I actually made one of the chore charts. Like, I love to make that kind of stuff, lists and things. And so anyways, it just was a way for us to do our chores, to help around the house, and earn like a small amount of money, which back then, you know, a small amount of money actually got you things. Nowadays, I'd have to buy, like, I'd have to pay my kids like five bucks to do a chore so that they could actually buy something. But, um, I mean, you know, a little bit of money, it all adds up. So that's a good thing too. So I, all of this to say that we don't usually pay our kids to do chores. Um, I know some people do, and it's like a family economy kind of thing, and I think it is a good idea, but I've just, I haven't done it, and partially because I want them to learn that no matter how old you are, you have to clean up after yourself, <laughs> and your your reward is the clean house, and so, like, I, you know, we pay our kids for, for babysitting, like, the older kids get paid for babysitting, and if they help us with something that's like a little extra like when we mow our lawn it takes like four hours so we do pay the older kids to mow the lawn because that is a big chore that that saves my husband and I time and so they can earn money that way or if they wanted to do a deep cleaning chore in the house then they could earn money that way as well but I mean they have their own little lives and they have like their own social life that they're doing and so they don't always go after those deep cleaning chores which is fine I don't mind doing them I just want to give them the opportunity that if they want to they can help out that way also just interjecting that I have an upcoming video about oiling the island and how to take care of this wood surface um, and cutting boards and so be on the lookout for that um I don't know where I was going with this just that the family economy we don't pay our kids for chores they, in my opinion, they're learning how to clean. So when they get older, they know how to clean. They know how to take care of their own homes. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. Look at my home. We've got fishy crackers all over this chair. That's why I'm vacuuming it. I just want them to learn how to clean, how to be self-sufficient, and not to have the excuse that I never learned how to clean, you know? Um, and which is legit. Some some parents prefer to do all the cleaning because you just get it done in one pass and it's at their level of like done. Oh, okay, so anyways, I'm vacuuming some crumbs here and I noticed that the vacuum is not suctioning very well. And I was like, oh no, I must have sucked something up when I was vacuuming that chair. And yes, yes I did. There is this tiny little purple foam ball in there. So... I got my husband to get it out for me. <laughs> and there goes my daughter to go run with dad. So then I decided to play safe and actually pick up some of these bigger crummy things so that my poor little vacuum doesn't have to vacuum them up. We actually have three vacuums right now. There's this little one that's nice for just like little things. Um, and then I have a new... Bissell vacuum that I just got that I'm really happy with because my Dyson that I got in like 2015 um, is finally starting to die and uh, the, like the hose attachment on the Dyson doesn't work. The, it actually vacuums okay and we just had it fixed because um, one of like the hose things was starting to come off but now the actual like hose extension cord thing what is it? Hose thing? Anyways, it's starting to come off. And so I'm not going to fix it again, but we can still use it to just like regular vacuum and stuff. So now I'm cleaning the TV off. Like look at the little grubby fingerprints on here. <laughs> There's some yogurt on here too. And at first I tried it with a dry cloth because they were like, well, you should just clean it with a dry one. Don't get it wet. But that did absolutely nothing, so I just got like a tiny bit of water on this microfiber cloth, and that is doing the trick. Like, looks so much better. So, anyways, I'm going to subject you to cleaning this TV while I ramble on a little bit more. Look at that focus and determination. <laughs> um, it, it, it was hard to see at certain angles. Now, now I'm showing you. Look. 
before, after, woohoo! Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that poinsettia that I have in the corner of the room in the previous shot. Uh, yeah, it's from last Christmas. There's two of them here in my living room, and I've just been watering them this whole time. <laughs> I'm not, like, a green thumb person. Well, I never thought that I was, but I have pretty decent luck with indoor things, and, um, yeah, I've just been watering it, and they haven't died. They lost their red leaves, as you can see. They're both green now, but I'm really curious, so I'm keeping them alive because I'm really curious if, come this winter, if they'll turn red again or not. I don't know. So now we are going to clean this little cubby space I have here. Um, it's, it's not a cubby space, but shelf, nook area. And um, you might be wondering what this black surface is. So when we built the house, I wanted it to be a potholder area. Um, and th then it's got those little silver things on them. Those are hooks that are magnets. And for a long time, I was able to hang my pots and pans here, um, but the little hook part of the magnet broke off, but the magnets have not broken off. They're like super strong magnets. And so I, they're stuck on there now, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how to get them off. Some of them still have hooks, which is useful. Like I can hang the bananas up, and the two at the top have hooks still, and so... Yeah, at the end, I do hang things on them, but um, I'm not really sure. I need to look into getting like a demagnetizer or something and getting rid of them. So that streak that's in the middle of this black thing, that is just from like pulling the magnet up and out of the way. It's kind of just like scratch the surface. <sighs> Anyways, it could be used like a chalkboard as well if I wanted to, but I don't usually use it that way. So there we go. We got this little shelf cleared off. Got some coupons here. We gotta use them. Do you guys use couponing? Um, I know it's something that like a lot of people do and when my sister was living in California she said it was like way easier to do. Like there was just like more coupons that you had. Here in Canada I feel like the fast food restaurants will send out coupons a little bit. Um, some of the grocery stores have some coupon things but it's just like not readily available so generally I don't coupon um you know if we're going to a fast food restaurant and we've got them around the house then I'll take those but other than that I'm not I'm not totally focused on couponing but I do have a video about saving money like grocery shopping and stuff and that is one of my suggestions as like I think it was like ninja level status for saving so check that out too Put all these beautiful apples out and then they were gone like within the week it does not take long for us to go through fruit especially when I put it out like on display for the kids it's like out of the bag then um they're more likely to grab some and to, to use it and then these are some of the older apples I'm just putting them on top but like I'll probably use them for cooking because now they're starting to get a little wrinkly you know So now I'm getting up here so that I can adjust the magnets, which this is a dangerous thing. <laughs> I was worried I was going to slip on the chair and then I was going to catch that on camera. I would have shared that with you guys because that would have been funny, but I probably would have hurt myself. Um, so I'm putting a couple strainers up here. They're lighter so they don't break the hooks off. Um, and then I, you know, like I make this adjustment and then I was like, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I was like, it's too low. I needed to fix it, so had to had to get back up there. So they're really hard to push around, the magnets are, and so yeah, that's me trying to shove them around and get them where I want them to be. And then I was contemplating, <laughs> how does that look? And I thought it looked pretty decent, I was, I was pretty happy with it small adjustments but 
Mostly because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach them <laughs> once they're up there that high. So, ta-da! Looks much better. Just ignore the left side there. <laughs> I did not do that. Alright, so now we are going to clean out. This is kind of like a junk spot where we just kind of put things up so they're out of the way. They've usually been left on the island or the table and they get stuck here. And I used to have a basket here, but I moved it so because I was going to put something here, but then I never did. And that was my fault. I should have put the basket back because at least the basket contained the clutter. Um, there was a lot of things up here that I didn't realize was here. Games, you know, there's some DVDs there. There is a, that little magnifying glass uh, telescope thing is from our playhouse, which uh, let's talk about the playhouse for a second. Last year, after our youngest son was sick and in the hospital, we just really wanted to stay home and have a really fun summer. And so we bought a wooden playhouse we took the time to like set it all up and build it and um it had like a little swing set on it and two slides and it was really great but then in the spring this this spring we decided oh maybe if we added some plywood it would be a little more stiff um so that it wouldn't rock as much when the kids were swinging <laughs> and um and i think that made another surface for the wind to blow against and it blew over and that was frustrating but we thought okay it's fine it's fine so we set it back up again and we did it fixed it all up again oh sorry i didn't show you cleaning where the horses were because they're kind of a delicate process <laughs> but i did dust underneath of those those horses okay so the playhouse so it blew over it blew over three times now and eventually the spring, or the swing broke off when it blew over the first time. And so now it just does not, it's not working properly, you know? So it's laying on the ground in the backyard. <laughs> and so that's why the telescope is in the kitchen. That is my story <laughs> to get around to that a whole roundabout story of that's why the telescope's in the kitchen. Aw, she gave me a hug. <laughs> These shelves are just more flat surfaces for things to collect. Um, I try to keep the lunch boxes in one of those little wire, wire baskets, especially like on the weekends and stuff. And then that way the kids can empty them, <laughs> hopefully. And then, so you don't have like the rotten food in them on Monday morning. And yeah, it has a place for them to stay. And then I also keep these larger kitchen appliances here. Um, the Instapot, I just got the air fryer and it's humongous and I was just talking to my friend that like we made fries the other day and tried to use it and it kind of frustrated me that it wasn't working as well as I thought that it should <laughs> so I was kind of like ah oh, might as well just make them in the <laughs> I was checking on you hi um I might as well make fries in the oven because then I could put them all on one flat pan um so I wasn't loving that but I did use it for like some veggies and stuff and it was good for that so I do like it it's just very big it's bulky I'm not entirely sure it's worth all the hype that everybody else is is hyping it up to be and there we go we have got a clean island we've got some shelves clean over here don't worry about that left hand side we'll have to do that another time and then I'm showing you this cupboard needs to be done, and this will be a future video to come. Oh, and this is our, like, junk drawer kind of cupboard, so be on the lookout for that, and I will talk to you guys later.